All right, great. So, um, uh, so we're we're going to be talking today about self advocacy at 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 work and um, what that means and how people who stutter, stutter um, can empower themselves to um, stand, stand up for, for ourselves when, when necessary and how employers can also be allies um, with, peop with, peop with people who stutter in the, in the, in the workplace. Um, so, we're, so Dale and I are gonna present some content um, for, for um, probably about 25 minutes or so, and then we'll take some um, um, questions from our esteemed audience, um, and then we'll wrap up with, um, you know, uh, um, strategies and suggestions that we can use um, uh, to empower ourselves at work. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and um, let Dale start off um, with the whole notion of implicit bias. <clears throat> okay, great, great. Uh, everybody can hear me okay? Mm -hmm. yep. All right, everyone's nodding. So that, I guess I should have asked that before I introduced myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about implicit biases, uh, sometimes referred to as subtle prejudice. Matter of fact, I, I, I think in my book I refer to it as subtle prejudice, so that's a term I'm, I'm, uh, I use more commonly. Uh, these are attitudes or stereotypes that our brains attribute to our to a particular group in an unconscious manner. Uh, now that's that's pretty much a dictionary definition. So let me explain it a little bit. Uh, this is something we we all do. Uh, every time we meet someone, we immediately begin attributing characteristics uh, to that person based on things like gender and race and height and a host of other characteristics, including their speech. Uh, this is something our brains do out of necessity. Uh, they, they have to categorize in order to make sense of a complex world. Uh, as a result, we don't always realize that we have these biases, that we have the, that the stereotyping is going on. Uh, and uh, remember, it's a, it's a subtle prejudice. Uh, often there is a feasible alternative explanation for the behavior we encounter. Uh, somebody treats us a particular way, we assume it's because of our speech, maybe it is, but it's gonna be quite easy for that person to say, uh, no, I was distracted. No, I was talking to somebody else. No, I always interrupt people, whatever it, uh, you know, whatever the, the behavior was. Uh, the problem, of course, with these kinds of uh, subtle prejudices is that when we brand people by group perceptions, it's oftentimes inaccurate. Uh, it's nearly always inaccurate. Uh, you know, not all women we meet are going to be nurturing at, you know, at least not at that given point in time. Not all people of Asian descent are going to be good at math. Not all, I mean, you, you, can, you can all come up with, with your examples of this. Uh, for people who stutter, the stereotype <clears throat> is that we're all very introverted, shy, anxious, nervous, uh, etc. Uh, that's not actually true. There's no evidence to suggest that those are traits more common to people who stutter. Uh, but if we're treated that way, we're going to face lost opportunities uh, educationally, uh, socially, and uh, more to the point of, of this webinar, vocationally. Uh, who wants to promote the wallflower? Okay. In a culture that rewards openness and, and rewards extroverts and re rewards take charge guys, uh, you know, that's not the person likely to be promoted. That's just, you know, one example. Uh, now, because this is normal to do and because uh, people don't, don't realize that they're doing it, the question sometimes comes up, well, what's, what's the problem? It's just part of being a, a human being. Uh, in a professional atmosphere, uh, it's important for people to recognize differences, to recognize individuality, uh, to take a step back and think about how stereotyping might be coloring your thoughts. 
Otherwise, people are going to face lost opportunities. We're going to waste a lot of talent that we, it just never gets uncovered. And uh, unfairness is going, to, is going to be prevalent within the workplace. Uh, subtle prejudices can result in anything from uh, people talking over you, people interrupting you, people not giving you a chance to speak, to something major like losing out on, on a major promotion. A subtle prejudice is a little bit different from, um, uh, from microaggression. Uh, so I'm gonna let uh, Pam talk a little bit about that right now, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back and give you some examples. Great, thanks Dale. Um, and I think it is, uh, it, it is important to explore um, and maybe define this term microaggression um, that we that pe that people might have been hearing over the last seven or ten years. Um, I'm going to ask everybody to just check that their microphone is on mute. I think there's one or two people on audio that I can hear some background. So please make sure your microphone is on mute if you're not the one talking. So microaggressions as Dale mentioned, um, are something a little bit different. And I'm still hearing some feedback. So if yeah. we could just all check to make sure that our mics are on mute. So Mike, microaggressions, um, a, a, a very well-known psychologist and researcher by the name of Dr. Daryl Wang, Wang Su came up with a uh, definition um, which makes a lot of sense to, to me. Mike, microaggressions, even though that term sounds aggressive, they're really just brief everyday exchanges that send negative messages to certain individuals solely because of their group membership. Um, those microaggressions or um, little mini insults basically attack a person for characteristics that are outside of their control. Um, and because they're brief everyday exchanges, sometimes they're often disguised as, oh, um, it's just, it's, it's, it's only a joke. Um, or, you know, we, like, you know, we didn't really mean anything by that. So um, because they're brief exchanges, and sometimes people aren't even aware that those are hap are happening sometimes it puts people who stutter or have any type of marginalized difference in a quandary as to 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 what should we do how should we react because we don't want to be looked at as the person that um, makes a big deal out of what other people see as nothing but a series of nothings can actually um, um, affect the person on the receiving end because it can make us feel um, devalued, demoralized, and less part 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 of 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 the team. So one example um, that I just actually came across um, over the weekend while while I was uh, reading some something um, has an employee um, in like the break room making some kind of a comment um, just out loud. Um, God, that project that we just worked on and that we just fin fin finished, that took so much of my en en energy and time. I think I'm going to start stuttering like an idiot any minute. You know, and, and, and that person probably did not mean anything malicious. And so that would be an example of something like we would have to like pick and choose our battles wise, wise, wisely. If that's the first time that person ever made a comment like that and, 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 and you don't hear it again, you could choose to say to, to not say anything about it. Or you can choose to consider feeling comfortable enough in your work, 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 workplace to be able to say something like, hey, can we talk about that for a sec? That's really what we're talking about when, 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 when we talk about self-advocacy self -ad, ad, at work. 
So as Dale mentioned, we're going to give a couple of examples of what some of the stuttering or speech re, 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 related um, slight prejudices might be. And then we'll talk a little bit about um, how and if we might want to address them. So I'm going to bounce that back over. Um, nope, actually, I'm going to take the first one. <laughs> so um, how many of you with just a show of hands have ever experienced being in interrupted at work um, you say yeah, i think so yeah yeah so you go ahead you say something um and and um uh and 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 and, and you've been interrupted or cut off by some 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 somebody else but if you're a person that stutters you could think that you're being interrupted or cut off because you're stut you're stut you're stuttering or you're caught in a block where there's just this pause and perhaps they don't realize that you're continuing on to say something. Um, and it might feel to you if you're cut off and never circled back to that, oh, they think that what I have to say couldn't poss poss possibly be important enough um, to hear. So that's one example of a slight prejudice in the form of being, being, being interrupted at work. And Dale's going to give us another example. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the people who finish our sentences. Uh, I realize that uh, they could be trying to help. An awful lot of times they, they are. Uh, but even if they're helping, they're doing so in a way that seems to be trying to remind us that... Uh, um, you know, their brains are digital and ours are still analog. <laughs> that we're somehow uh, holding them up. They, they, you know, they may not realize it, but finishing the sentences is, is, is really kind of the equivalent of doing this. You know, come on, let's, let's go, let's go. Uh, it just tends to, to hurry us. Uh, and often uh, they finish the sentences incorrectly. Uh, you know, not with what we, we were going to say. Uh, so there, there be, there's an irony to the situation in that uh, they're trying to help, but they're actually making conversation uh, much harder work for us. Uh, a, a recent example, uh, somebody asked me, uh, how's work? I said, it's all right, though I get tired of, he jumped in and said, uh, I'll, 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 I'll office co-workers, well, he, he did it without the stutter, but office co-workers, <laughs> uh, yeah, me too. Uh, that's just something we have to put up with. There's this one guy and off he went on some frankly kind of boring story about um, uh, some, some guy at, at work. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't going to say that. I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going to talk about co co-workers. Uh, I was going to say something else. Now, in this particular example, the only cost was having to listen to a boring story. But, you know, if it's a conference room and I'm trying to talk and somebody's finishing my sentences or multiple people are finishing my sentences, uh, I'm not getting a chance to, uh, to, to say my, my part. I'm not getting a, ch a chance to participate like everybody else is. So you've got somebody who will say, oh, I was just trying to help when in fact uh, what they're doing is anything but, but helpful. So, uh, did, you, did you have another example, Pam? I do, I do, and thank, and thank you for um, exploring that, that, that one because I'm sure we've all experienced that. People thinking they're being kind by help, 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 helping us out, but um, it actually can be you know, even a little bit disrespectful depending on how we, in, interpret that. So another example of what could be considered implicit bias or slight prejudice um, a surrounding sweet speech and, and, and stuttering is when we're just, we, we offer something. So we, we make a suggestion or we offer an I, I, idea and we're just ignored. <laughs> we're just ignored. Somebody says, um, yes, but, and goes on just like Dale just said to, to, to say, something that they feel is more important or more or more val val 
valuable and they never actually like thank us or um, uh, acknowledge even that we offered a thought. So sometimes that can, that can feel like, like, a, like a verbal pat on the head. Again, one of those just condescending, really, really slight feelings. But if you're left feeling invalidated, and thinking that it could possibly have to do with how you're presenting yourself, again, that's another example where um, we may begin to feel a little bit demoralized by um, regular um, um, examples of, of, of that. And then we have like one more um, example that Dale's gonna share, um, and I'm sure we've also all experienced this too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of, of uh, verbal pats on the head, uh, what about when our speech is complimented? Okay, uh, you're not you're not stuttering as much today. Uh, you know, you're speaking really well today. Oh, I noticed that you're not stuttering. Or even, um, uh, oh, you stutter. I can I I, I can hardly tell. Hmm. Uh, like we're supposed to thank them uh, for that that observation. I uh, actually just over this this past weekend, uh, I, I was at a writing workshop because I, I I do weird stuff like that, <laughs> and uh, I was talking to somebody. I, I met somebody, and uh, she uh, she was asking what, what I do for a living, and uh, said, "Oh, you 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 stutter. I, um, uh, I I I haven't even been able to to hear it." Uh, now she was saying it as, as an observation. And I, I, I really didn't, didn't mind that much. Um, I'm talking more about people who um, act like we should celebrate being able to talk like the rest of the group. Like they're, they're sitting in judgment of our speech. Uh, you know, here's my thumbs up for what, what you just did. Uh, is, you know, soon you'll, you'll be able to join us at the normal table. Mm -hmm. Uh, and more importantly, not focusing on uh, what we have to say, but just sitting in judgment of how we say it. Uh, it can come across as very condescending, we, well, mostly because it is kind of condescending. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, wh whether it's meant that way or not, uh, if, you know, if a coworker finished a report, a verbal report in a meeting, and uh, you said, wow, I like the way you spoke. Uh, all of your sentences had both a subject and a verb. Good job, Joe. <laughs> Hell of a report. Everyone would look at you like, like, like you're an idiot. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, I don't think people stop and realize that uh, maybe that's how, how we're, we're hearing these, these kinds of judgments. Mm hmm yeah, and yeah, so, and I just actually thought of um, one, one more example that I, that I want to throw out there and, 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 and share. Um, I've sometimes had people say, say, say to me when I've, um, you know, either done a presentation at work or even given a speech at Toast, Toastmasters. I don't know if any of you are familiar with what Toastmasters is, but I've had people say to me, oh my God, you're such an inspiration. You're <laughs> so brave to get up, up, up up there in front of everybody and 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 speak and 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 stutter and i don't know if people really realize like how that makes us how it makes me feel actually like you're applauding me for something that everybody does you know i don't want to be singled out because i'm showing brave brave bravery for doing something that is Expect it in the in the in the workplace. Have any of you ever experienced that? Anybody ever anybody ever congratulated you for just you know speaking or you know getting out of bed for the day? <laughs> Existing, yeah. Existing, right, right. So so we're so we've brought this all up and we've talked about this and the and 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 the theme of today's webinar is self advocacy at 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 work. It's really important, like I mentioned earlier, that we kind of pick and choose our bat, bat, battles and decide which 
one, if, if, I mean, if you're in a workplace where, you know, you have to choose which one you want to deal, deal with, that's probably not the best place to work, but you want to make sure that you're in a good place yourself to, 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 um, address, um, a, a slight prejudice or a condescending insult. Um, and if we don't, the importance of addressing, um, slight uh, prejudices and uh, negative messaging is that it can really lead to inauthentic relationships, um, feeling demoralized and undervalued, and those those um, decreased relationships will then also um, um, end up in uh, less productivity. Because at the end at the end of the day, we succeed at work because we collaborate with each other. other other and we develop relationships in order to be able to work as as a team but if you withdraw from developing those relationships because you feel like you've been on the receiving end once or twice or a couple of times um and felt insulted then then it's important that that we address that um so one one tip that I'm going to start off with, um, and I've already kind of said, like, ask yourself, is this worth my time and effort? Um, it's also really a good I I I idea to just take a pause and step away for a, a, a moment and try not to assume or react right away, because it could completely be some um, innocent, um, non-malicious um, 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 event that happened. And try, if you do decide that you want to, um, you know, bring, 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 bring it up, focus on the event, not the person. It's not about winning or making a point or making the other person feel bad. It's about helping them to understand something simply from a different lens, from our perspective, how that might feel. Does that make sense to you, Dale? Yeah, yeah. That's a, uh, it is possible to uh, stick up for yourself without uh, accusing somebody of bias or stereotyping or somebody something they might get real offended by. I mean, it, it's simply the difference between uh, don't ignore me because I stutter versus don't ignore me. Uh, however, that's that's said. And um, let me just uh, say say real quick, I'm not necessarily saying uh, you know in a situation you should say don't ignore me. Uh, you know, I. I, I I don't know what you should do in your particular situation. There's not a, you know, there, there's, there's not an answer here that works in all situations. Uh, you know, you're the one who has to judge the mood in the room, how well you know the person you're talking to, what the benefits and costs are. You know, all of this stuff is is real situational. Um, I would though, if 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 it's if, if it's okay with with you, Pam, I would like to to, to give a few examples of how people have have handled uh, this uh, sort of thing. Um, it's I had, I had mentioned before about uh, people who finish sentences for you. Uh, I actually uh, heard that going on in a support group meeting recently. Hmm. Uh, yeah, of, of all places, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, the individual who kept getting her sentences finished uh, said at one point, you don't have to finish my sentences for me. I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking uh, it's probably been a while before I, or since I was that direct with somebody about finishing sentences. Most of the time, uh, even if somebody finishes a sentence correctly, I will go ahead and finish the sentence after them just to send the message that finishing my sentences isn't going to save us any time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to talk this way. Uh, of course, sometimes you get crossed up doing that. Uh, somebody finishes your sentences and somebody else picks up on what they said and the group kind of moves on from you. Um, you know, I guess if you know the people well enough, if, um, you know, if it works for you, you could say something like, uh, you know, just because it takes me a little longer to speak, you know, because it takes me one second longer to, to speak, uh, 
doesn't mean I don't get a turn. Uh, you can uh, you can use nonverbal signals. Uh, I used to work with somebody who uh, he didn't stutter, but uh, he had he had kind of a slow speech rate. Uh, and uh, he used a lot of signs, a lot of gestures. Um, and, you know, people would be talking real fast and talking over each other and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And uh, he would just kind of put up a hand and say, <sighs> okay, hang on. <laughs> I agree with what you have to say, but I think we want to take a point from this group over here too. And he would just change the whole, um, the whole pace of the conversation. Uh, I told him one time, he, he would have made a great person who stutters. <laughs> uh, you know, I, 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 I wish I could do that as well as, as he does. Uh, I also wanted to um, uh, mention just um, some things I've heard people do when they had their, their fluency complimented. Um, I used to say, uh, they say, oh, I, I, uh, I, I don't hear your stuttering, whatever it was. And I would say, oh, well, I, I, I hope it's improving for the right reasons. Uh, but nobody really understood what, what that meant. <laughs> uh, now I'm more likely to bring it back to the content because what, what, they're, what they're focusing on is the delivery, not the content. So they say, okay, um, uh, uh, oh, you're speaking real well, great. Anyway, my point is, and uh, I, I will go on with, with that. Uh, on Saturday, when somebody said, I don't hear your stuttering, I said, uh, uh, well, you will if you listen to me long enough. <laughs> uh, you know, and um, I, again, I, I don't think there was anything ma malicious in that uh, exchange at all. Uh, keep in mind that the stereotype of people who stutter are people who are passive. Uh, some people view passivity, they, they view introversion as, uh, I can walk on this person a little bit more than I can other people. Uh, that's what we're fighting against. Uh, so uh, my advice would be to don't go away. That doesn't mean, you know, every single time uh, you, you suffer a microaggression, you have to say something, you, you have to give a lecture. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying don't don't let go of it completely. Don't don't just uh, don't, don't don't just let them them all go. Uh, stereotypes are, um, are are reversed through uh, exposure. They're reversed through education. Both of those take a long time. In other words, uh, stereotypes die hard. Mm -hmm. And by telling somebody, uh, you know, you don't have to finish my sentences or. Um, uh, you know, I'm perfectly capable of doing this myself. Uh, that will work in that particular instance. It may not work in the next instance. They may need it. it well, they, they will at some point later on uh, need another reminder. Mm -hmm. Really good stuff there, Dale. Really good stuff. And I just want to add one more, one, one, one more piggyback thought to, to that. And then we're going <clears> to <throat> actually turn it over so that we can hear from some of you. Great. Um, one of the other strategies <clears throat> that, that I would consider um, that maybe we try when we, when we feel that, 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 that um, insult or that slight prejudice that we're talking about is simply, again, to reframe it. You know, stay away from, and Dale, Dale mentioned it, stay away from trying to accuse anybody of anything because that gets their back up right away and then they get really defensive. But if we can reframe it to the end goal of educating somebody about um, how, that, how, to, how it made you feel so that they can potentially become an ally for you at work. I think that that's one of the um, most important things that, that we can take a look at when we're talking about self-advocacy is, you know, quickly educating people um, about, hey, that, that, that did kind of bother me a little bit. So here's why, and here's why it's important to me. And, you know, not make it be some big, big frustrating deal, but simply a quick moment of education where then you've gal get gathered some support and an ally from a colleague. That'll help you, that'll help the other person, and it will help um, breed better, stronger re relationships. 
Yeah, I, I think that's, that's a really good point. Because if you get in, in somebody's face, that person's never going to be an ally. If you uh, say something like, uh, well, do you have anything that you're sensitive about? Do you have anything that, um, you know, uh, I don't know, you, you grew up being self-conscious about some, something like that. Okay, let's, let's talk about that. I mean, there are ways of turning that person into an ally. And as Pam was saying, uh, then, then you're not necessarily fighting every battle alone. Right, right. So we're a little bit past the midway point, and we wanted to um, kind of like take a pause here as we've been advocating that we, that we pause and step back and process um, but we would like to hear from any of you that, that, that has a thought or a question or you want to share an, a similar experience that maybe you've had that you can tell us like how you kind of responded. <clears throat> you can either um, unmute yourself and uh, signal that you'd like to share something or you could write it over in the, in the, chat, in the chat bar. Uh, for, um, for, for me, um, I, you know, when people try to f finish my sentences, um, I uh, also um, to do, to do the technique where I'll just, um, you know, like, even if they f f finish it with the right word, I will s still uh, continue um, my sp speech and then uh, f f finish it um, on my own. Uh, but sometimes, like I, um, you know, like I, I, I kind of uh, pl pl play around with that. Uh, so, like, if you know, so someone is particularly, um, you know, persistent about finishing my sentences, and I'll, um, you know, increase my severity a little bit, maybe even you know, <laughs> pseudo stuttering, and then. Uh, you know, um, hopefully that will get the message across to not to finish um, my sentences. Mm. How does that make you feel when you do that? Um, so, I mean, I don't know, like I, I feel, I mean, like I always like, um, you, you know, like have uh, f uh, for fun with it. So, um, you, know, you know, like I always feel uh, em 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 empowered w when I do that, you know, j j just to kind of, you know, um, uh, I don't want to say like uh, s um, s stick it back to them, but, you know, <laughs> just to kind of like, you know, let it be known, like, you know, to um, um, ease up on f f finishing my sentences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, 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 go, go ahead, Dale. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I... I I think that, that that's great. I've I've done I, I've actually done that be, before because what was running through my my head was, uh, well I I thought I sent the message that I was going to go ahead and finish it anyway, and yet you did it again. So uh, yeah, so 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 the next time, um, yeah, I'm 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 going to take a little bit longer and uh, see if I can train you that way. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, uh, unbelievably. Uh, Sometimes it never works. People just uh, just just keep on doing it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. Yeah, but <clears throat> that's definitely you know it's definitely a great strategy because what I thought of as you as you shared that uh, was um, uh, it's kind of like allowing yourself to like take back your space for a minute and take back your power. And we don't want to call this you know a power struggle because mm -hmm. it's certainly not. But if somebody you know takes away your your thunder in the moment, you know, taking it back in any way you can just kind of like sets the e equilibrium again. And that's important. Yeah. So we have another point over on the, on the, on the sidebar. Olivia, do you want to bring it up yourself or is it okay if I just bring it up? Okay. You, yes. Okay. So Olivia mentions that she's a PhD student. Um, and she's been blatantly told that she cannot not not be a professor and and ha and has had lab tasks taken away from her because of her speech. So that's a pretty blatant form of discrimination. That's certainly not a slight prejudice. So her question is, how would you address something that is is so directly discriminatory? So I'm going to let Dale maybe take a stab at that. <laughs> I, as a, a, a professor who stutters, yeah, uh, 
apparently I got I got some bad vocational advice uh, somewhere along the way. Uh, are, are you are, are you studying, uh, Libby? Are, are you are you studying in, in the United States? Because mm -hmm. uh, that's um, uh, I I I believe stuttering is protected under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, so what they're supposed to be doing is giving you some some added consideration that allows you to do what you're you're able to do. Um, there, I mean, this this could be a webinar in and of itself. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, there, there, there's there's been a lot of test cases for this. As far as I know, they've all been settled out of court, so there's not a precedent on the books. So. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what you can point to there other than to say um, it's, it, it sounds like they're breaking the law here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to just chime in there as well. Yes, in the United States, stuttering is protected under the Americans with Dis Disabilities Act. Um, so again, this would be something that you would have to really consider do I really want to chal 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 challenge this and make a big deal out of it? In my opinion, I would say yes, but you know you have to you have to choose what you're comf comf comfortable with. Um, if your university has a student disability resource center, I would definitely go to them if you're not already. Um, I highly advocate that people utilize those types of resources on campus and on on university. They need to know that that's ha that that's happening, and somebody from the um, disability resource center can actually go to that professor and speak to them on on on, on your behalf. And then, if there isn't you know some positive resolution of 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 that, you know, then it may need to go outside of that, and it may need to go to like the 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 HR office on the university campus. Um, definitely a tricky one. And as Dale said, that has happened in the past um, with other students stud studying in school. Uh, Car Car Carmen wants to add there. Yeah, actually, I was going to bring up a situation that somebody in my chapter is going through. And um, again, I don't know if this is part of a separate uh, uh, webinar, but um, I won't tell the whole story, but she's been at her place of work for many, many years. And after having an accident, she's not able to do the same work that she was doing before. And now she has to do a lot of work doing phone calls. Mm. And she had informed them before, and everybody knows that she stutters. And she has been asking for accommodations, in order, uh, something as simple as having a private area, even if it's a small room to make her phone calls, just because as we all know why she's asking for that, right? I mean, more, feeling more, more comfortable, not have 20 people around her listening and all that. And they are giving her a very hard time about that. She has talked to her HR department. They want her to fill out some forms. They want some kind of proof for something saying that she's a person that stutters. Um, I, I provided her with some information and we are working with somebody, but I don't know if, you know, from the NSA point of view, if there is something else that can be done to, that we can say, you know, yeah, this is legally protected and you should provide some accommodations. And she feels like they are actually pushing her to live on her own because they are giving her even more and more of this work mm. so it's it's not a good situation um, we, we don't know how to help her I mean we are trying to work with her but we haven't got to the point to talk to somebody at her work um, I mean we're just at the beginnings we're just trying to find how to help her mm -hmm. um, well it's definitely it's definitely um, you know a uh, 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 pro it's protected under the aid ADA. So an employer has to offer reasonable accommodation for a person that discloses a dis mm -hmm. 
a disability and it sounds like that person has mm -hmm. only yeah. the only out that an employer has um they only have to accommodate a disability if it does not prove an undue burden on the biz biz business and i can't see why having a private room to make telephone calls would prevent would 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 be any um undue burden on the employer so um this is actually a hot topic um, for people who stutter at work. And in October, <laughs> I know that's not an answer for today, but mm -hmm. in October, we will be having um, a webinar on um, um, stuttering and employment law. Um, we do cool. have an attorney that's going to um, co-facilitate a session and um, you know give us some advice, but I'm, I'm gonna suggest to both Carmen and Olivia that at some point, it may indeed become a legal matter that needs right. to be looked at, because it is against the law. Right. Well, I, I guess does, does the NSA have resources that can help in situations like, like that, like in a legal situation? Um, if I contact them in office, can somebody give us the legal background or some kind of help? Actually, yes, there is there is a lawyer on the NSA board of directors. So absolutely, you could reach out to the national office um, seeking some guidance on that on, on that point. Great, thank you, Pam. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to mention one one quick thing about uh, Olivia's uh, situation. I, I just read on the uh, uh, scroll that it was it was your your PhD advisor, uh, which which makes it a little bit tricky i mean if if you brought this story to your average college office of students with disabilities or student accessibility services something like that uh, they would probably say wait a second this person said what uh you know it would be kind of a big deal for for them uh if it's if it's a small faculty if it's an advisor that you know you want to keep things working pretty smoothly i would probably present it as uh, you know, this is what he told me. I think he's mistaken. Uh, I wanted to verify just, you know, it's a, a matter of, 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 of how you present it. But um, no, based on, based on what, what you're saying, it, it sounds, mm -hmm. sounds like your advisor is incorrect on this one. Mm -hmm. Now we have another, we have another question um, over on the chat um, from Brit, from Brit, Brittany, um, Brittany, do you want to um, ask the question yourself, or um, are you okay with me reading it? <clears throat> Brittany, can you can you do you want to? Oh, she, she um, said you can read it. All right, great, great. So, um, so Brit, so Brittany is a speech therapist working at a veterans hospital, and one of her pa 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 patients is a person who stutters. He's involved in a group where he has to share in, in information with others. He's also finding people talking over him and um, finishing his sentences. So Brittany suggested that um, he raise a hand when he wants to notify others that he's still speaking. And he has also been using a sign that states that he is a person who stutters to help explain his situation. However, he's still finding others talking over and finishing his words. Are there any other recommendations um, that we might that 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 we might offer? So, first of all, I, I guess my question would be: I'm not really sure. I'd be completely comfortable holding up a sign if that's what we mean. If that's what Brittany means, holding up a sign saying "I stutter." Um, I, I'm not sure that I would, I, I personally would feel comfortable with that. I probably would feel more comfortable making a verbal statement, perhaps at like the beginning of a group and just, you know, raise, 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 ask him to raise his hand and just say, hey, I just want every, everybody to know that I stutter. It might take me a moment, a, mom, a moment or two, and I like to be able to articulate my own sentences. So please let me finish. Um, I think I'd probably feel more comfortable with that, but I don't know, Brittany, if, if that would be okay um, in the setting. Um, Dale, do you have a thought about, about, about that? Uh, the, the, the sign was an unusual mental image for, for me too. Um, 
Yeah, it, 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 it depends on the setting so much with mm -hmm. this one. If, uh, if, if there's kind of a nasty overtone to, to this, I mean, it could, uh, you know, he could he could stand up. He could make a, a you know a more obvious gesture. He could point to the signs. There's uh, you know lots of ways you can say, um, look, it's it's my turn here. If if that's not the mood of the room, you know, maybe if, if there's there's probably a way to make a joke about it. There's probably a way to um, to, to, to 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 state his case in a way that's not not quite as aggressive as that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it just depends. Um, oh, actually, there's a little bit more mm -hmm. here now. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. So he, so he requested the sign because he did not want to verbally commu commu communicate that he stutters. Um, Brittany um, initially recommended that he, that he, that he do um, uh, uh, disclose that by saying it verb, verb verbally but he was uncomfortable with that idea so he chose to you know make it a visual okay. uh, that that he stutters um so what do you think Dale? like do you think like maybe Brittany just maybe saying something to the rest of the group like hey it's really important that we be respectful of um everybody's um time time and um some people just might need more time than others to share well, that, that's a strategy that has worked in the past. Uh, if the person is comfortable enough, is desensitized enough to stuttering that they're okay with that, uh, then uh, yeah, the, the therapist, the SLP, comes into the setting um, and uh, uh, you know talks a little bit about stuttering and things that uh, things that help, things that that don't. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't do it unless the um, uh, unless the client, unless the, the individual is uh, is okay with it. Yeah. So Kenneth um, wrote wrote in um, a suggestion. Um, Kenneth is one 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 wondering um, can Brittany, as a therapist, perhaps educate the rest of the group on facts about stuttering, um, similar to maybe maybe may, maybe what a school based speech therapist might might do. Um, again, that's probably a really good idea. But you'd also have to like gauge the the um, gauge the climate of the group to determine if that would be something that would be received positively, or maybe people would get their back up about. Yeah, yeah. When when that's done in schools, uh, it has to be a kid who's who's very very highly desensitized, mm -hmm. and I would say that's you know that that's going to be the same for an adult as well. Yeah. So. Brittany also mentioned she's not at the group, unfortunately, but that would be a good idea to see if she could attend a session and provide that education. Um, she'll ask him if he'd be comfortable with that idea. So great. So we've got yeah, a possible strat strat strategy there. Um, we have a couple more minutes okay. for um, uh, questions. If anybody else wants to um, chime in or add anything. Um, uh, Pam? Yes. Um, to add on towards the end of this, and, and I'm gonna say something that I think is a bit um, obvious. Um, this particular person is going to have to eventually get to a point where they do feel that it's okay to share that they stutter, either, either, either verbally or the sign because that is that is the only way that to advocate um, comfortable with um, stuttering period as well as with um, stuttering in a group. Mm -hmm. That's a great point, Doug. You were breaking up a little bit, but you're right. I mean, one of the one of the strat strat strategies there could be to help the you know to help that 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 client on the road towards acceptance. But I will just um, you, you know um, bear again. Brittany's a therapist at a Veterans Administration um, hospital, so we don't know what the group you know what the group climate is. I mean, this could be a person that is 
suffering PTSD from, you know, some type of conflict and perhaps adding to the mix that, hey, I, 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 I stutter, so I have that going on as well as perhaps PTSD, that, that could make it a little bit more challenging, but those are excellent points. Yeah, they, they are, because it, it, it makes you wonder if the sign has just become part of the background now and it's, it's losing its effectiveness and he may have to, if, 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 if he's able, he, he may have to verbalize something at some point. Yeah, yeah. Wow, well, this has turned out to be such a great conversation and we, 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 we do just have um, a few minutes left. The time always just flies when we're doing these, these, uh, web, these webinars. I'm really, I'm really thankful that, um, that Olivia and Carmen and, and um, uh, uh, Brittany brought up their examples for the rest of us to um, consider and learn from. Um, we're going to wrap up in just a moment, but I saw Dave Rodriguez um, had his hand up earlier and then disappeared, but he's back now. Did you want to add something, Dave? Um, sure. Yeah. So just to add to what um, Olivia was saying earlier, um, I mean, I've, I've worked in academia for almost 10 years now. And as someone who has a stutter, the fact that your PhD advisor is telling you that you can't be a professor or you can't teach is infuriating and an egregious failure of that person as an advisor. Um, so I, I think I would say, you know, um, first say like, I'm sorry that that's happening to you. That's really, really awful. Um, I, I, I work at a large university in Florida as well. So Dale, I think you and I are probably colleagues. Um, I'm at Florida State. Uh, but um, so I think that you know, just finding who the allies are in your department is probably good. And then definitely like going to the SDRC, reporting it, like making sure you have the documentation in place uh, is going to be, you know, um, I think the best set of action sort of going forward. And I also acknowledge that that is like a really sensitive relationship. Like a lot of your professional life hinges on those kinds of things. So it's hard and I'm really sorry that you're going through that. Um, but, you know, I think trying to find the allies in your department is really going to be um, the way to kind of um, try to get out of that. Yeah, excellent point, Dave. Thank you for um, adding that and share and um, sharing that because that kind of loops us right back into the conclusion of 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 uh, of our of our time today. Um, Self advocacy is really all about being assertive um, and and recognizing that um, it's okay to speak up for ourselves, whether it be at work or at you at university or in a um, in a social group setting, um, we, we, we have the right to do that. And self-advocacy is just really all about feeling comf comfortable and included enough in our spaces. Today we're talking about at work, but included enough at work to be able to say, hey, that made me feel really uncomfortable. Can we talk about that for a second. So if people are able to reach that point where they can do, do that, then they're on their way to developing those self-advocacy and, and, and being self-assertive um, skills. I want to thank you, Dale, so much for being here today and, 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 and sharing your ex, ex, expertise with us. Um, I, I think we covered a lot of ground today. Oh, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, 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 I'd love to do it again. I, I really enjoyed this. So I, I thank everybody for coming. Yeah. Today. So um, just as a reminder, um, the NSA does have um, a, a, a great wealth of resources available for uh, uh, pe uh, people who stutter, stuttering in the workplace. There's lots of information and coming information for employers as well. Um, um, maybe Olivia, you might want to grab um, off the NSA website um, the brochure um, um, "Stuttering in the Workplace for Employers." Um, it's not quite the same relationship, but essent essentially, as a student, your professors are your bosses, so it's kind of a similar one. I also want to um, let 
pe let people know that you can um, visit the NSA Career Success Works um, webpage, www.westutter.org backslash career success. And stay tuned, we'll have registration and information up soon for our September webinar, which will be stuttering and mindfulness in the workplace. And then in October, as I said earlier, we will have a session on stuttering and employment law, which I think will be really beneficial to a number of people. So again, thank, thank you all for being here. Um, maybe just unmute yourselves really quick and say goodbye. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thank goodbye. you, Bob. Thank you, Dave. Bye, everyone. Thank, thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.